Are you wondering how you can get faster? How can you lower your 40 time or increase your speed on the court, on the field, whatever athletic endeavor that you're involved in? We're gonna dive deep into the topic of speed regulation and what goes into making you run faster. Let's get rolling. What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and I'm gonna talk about the topic of speed regulation and how you can utilize this understanding and these principles to get yourself faster and how we utilize this at Garage Strength in our How to Get Faster speed training program that's available at GarageStrength.com. It's 12 weeks long, but let's dive deep into the understanding of speed regulation and what goes into actually running faster from a neurological perspective. A lot of times we hear discussions around, oh, we gotta get stronger glutes, we gotta get stronger hamstrings, we gotta be more explosive, but no one really covers the topic of what does this even mean from a from a mental perspective? How can we constantly improve our technique? How can we control our locomotor system so that we can run more effectively when we are at top speed? And so to understand that, we've got to go into the physiological aspects behind sprint mechanics and what goes into each specific phase of a sprint, especially if we're talking about field sports. Some of the biggest key aspects that we've got to understand right off the bat is that there's going to be three phases behind speed work, and it's going to be the start, it's going to be acceleration or the drive phase, and it's going to be top speed or maximal speed. So under each phase, we have to understand then, okay, what is, how is our body regulating force production? How is our body understanding how to put out maximal amounts of force so that we can run as fast as physically possible and, and mentally possible? And we've got to start right away with the start. And we have to see that from the beginning, our brain, and this is my sweet drawing of a brain, our brain in the beginning, when we're getting set into that start position, we have to establish a stretch shortening cycle and multiple joints when we are gonna get into that starting position. And if you wanna understand a little bit further about stretch shortening cycles, head over and watch the physiology of plyometrics and know that plyometric training trains the body how to use the stretch shortening cycle a little bit more effectively and that is going to transfer over to what we're doing out of that start position. We've got to get set in the proper positions so that our body can utilize its defense mechanisms as effectively as possible. And what one of the biggest struggles behind sprinting is comprehending that your brain is gonna be functioning for, on two different levels. So you're gonna have the actual motor proposition to start the race, the, the actual action in your brain that's telling yourself, like where you are actively telling yourself, okay, it's time to go, it's time to recruit as fast as possible. And so we're gonna have a motor proposition and coming out of the start position, we're gonna be utilizing the stretch shortening cycle so that we can have our brain send a stimulus to our muscles, and this is our muscle here, to recruit as quickly and as fast as possible high threshold motor units. So if we can recruit those as rapidly as possible, we can come out of the start position effectively. We can trigger ourselves to start utilizing strong arm swings. We can make sure that we're in that good technical positions with our torso related to our shins coming out of the start. And at the start position, we want about 70% of our weight on the front foot. But most of what we want to talk about is comprehending how the brain is working. So out of that start position, the brain is going to be signaling with that motor proposition that's active from you. It's purposeful. You're prepared for the gun or you're, you're prepared for that start out of a 40 yard dash and you are actively telling yourself when to move as rapidly as possible. So if we can think about the, lo the locomotive system starts with the, that motor proposition but then the sensory receptors is gonna be in charge of how we react during the race or how we react during that 40 yard dash. So we're gonna talk about afferent signals, reafferent signals and extero receptors. And that's stuff that we have to comprehend before we get deeper into this video series on how to get faster. And so during the drive phase, 
which is the second phase of the sprint, it's entirely focused on acceleration. And if we are in a field sport like soccer, like football, like lacrosse, the drive phase is the most important phase that's gonna transfer over to the field. Very, very rarely will field competitors or court competitors get to top speed. In fact, in field sports, you will only get to top speed if you're a wide receiver or you're a running back or your linebacker who's running on like a 75, 80 yard touchdown or interception, anything along those lines. Almost all of field sports are gonna be involved with that drive phase or acceleration. And that's the name of the game. So we've gotta understand when we come out of that first three to five steps of the start, we're entering into the drive phase of the acceleration phase. Okay. And we're going to start to comprehend the stumble reflex. So what is a stumble reflex? Think about the stumble reflex as you're walking down the street, your back foot gets tripped up, back foot gets caught on a branch. And as your back foot gets caught on the branch, your body inherently stumbles with that, that plant leg. It reestablishes that plant leg to move forward rapidly. And basically, at the primal level, sprinting and acceleration is, is that established stumble reflex with joint movements trained as optimally as possible. So during training, you've got to establish motor propositions to make your stumble reflex as optimal as possible so that when you are in a race, your afferent sensory receptors and so your Golgi tendon organ, your muscle spindles that are inside your muscles, they can fire as rapidly and as optimally as possible. From a technical perspective, our eyes are gonna lead our head and our torso, so we're gonna slowly come up from that torso lean so that our plant leg is starting to get underneath us, underneath our hips. The drive phase is gonna be predominantly quad dominant. So that's why you would see football players like Saquon Barkley who have massive quads, massive legs, have much more muscle mass than a world-class sprinter. Now they're both very fast, but the name of the game for Saquon Barkley is acceleration. The name of the game for a world-class sprinter is acceleration and top end speed. So they're, they're gonna be a little bit different and the nervous system needs to be trained a little bit differently. And that's what we do in our 12 week, how to get faster program is we try to incorporate these three phases into training knowing that most athletes are going to be focused tremendously on the start and the drive phase. So as they come out of that quad dominant drive phase, now they're going to go from about 80% of the motor proposition being an active control. At the end of the drive phase, about 40% of their active control is, is from the motor proposition. Now it's starting to become much more of a race that's involved with sensory receptors, okay? So think about while you're running at high speeds and you're accelerating rapidly, you are not actively telling yourself to run as fast as possible. Your body's reacting and it's all from that established stumble reflex and the established running techniques that we'd be using through training to increase your speed. Okay, and then once we would get to that top end speed, it's gonna be minimally based around exteroception. So exteroception would be training and hearing your coach tell you to do something while you're running. It, it'll be trying to push yourself a little bit harder. At top speed, there will be a little bit of exteroception where you will be trying, if, you're, if you are a sprinter, you'll be trying to hawk down somebody if they're beating you. But in all reality, most of that top end speed is just reaction based. There's, there's minimal action from your brain telling you what to do. It's, it's more just a reactive base feedback loop at top end speed. So what this means is that as we're going through training and from a physiological perspective, we've got to comprehend how our nervous system works. We've got to comprehend that when we're training running hills, hills are going to help us tremendously in the drive phase and the acceleration phase. We've got to understand what the, the specific lifts are going to do for us out of the start what these lifts are gonna do for us out of the, the drive phase and what lifts can actually help us at top end speed, as well as understanding stretch shortening cycles and how plyometrics can help increase our motor proposition reaction time. And then over time, start to train and improve our stumble reflex so that our sprinting mechanics can help us increase our speed 
on the field. And this is how we lay out our program in the 12 weeks, how to get faster sprint program. We try to understand the three phases that we're gonna go through and how each lift and how each exercise that we're utilizing is gonna improve your speed so that you can run faster and ultimately accelerate more rapidly than your opponents. If you like this information, head over to GrouchStrength.com. You can pick up the 12 week how to get faster sprint training program. Please like this content, ring that notification bell so that every single video that we put out, you are informed about. Comment down below on what you need to work on and what you need to improve. Do you need to improve the start? Do you need to improve that drive face so that you can increase your speed on the field and you can constantly get faster and ultimately become a better athlete? Peace.